Welcome back. I'm Teresa Harding, and we are going to talk about Zoom meeting etiquette. I am on so many Zoom meetings, and I can't believe the things that I see happen on these Zoom meetings. And I realize, you know what? A lot of people may not even know. They just don't know. They don't realize. They don't realize how, how rude it is what they're doing. They don't realize how distracting it is. They don't realize how thoughtless it is of the person who's trying to teach or of the other attendees. So we, these aren't just an arbitrary set of rules imposed by society. Rather, etiquette means a way to show respect and to be thoughtful toward other people. When we follow proper etiquette, we are effectively saying that we acknowledge and value the feelings, the time, and the efforts of the people around us. When we do this, it encourages a sense of trust and comfort. It facilitates smoother, more efficient, and more productive interactions. But it's not just that. The, thought, the thoughtfulness is the thing that gets me the most. That is what's most important to me. Because I want you to think about this. Some people look at etiquette at the dinner table and they think it's so ridiculous. Why do I have to have a, the spoon on this side? Why does the fork have to be on that side? Let me tell you why. Because they are trying to be thoughtful of you. They want it to be as easy as possible. What is the most common side that people will reach toward to get their fork? Did you know that when they, when they design stoves and items for your kitchen and cars and everything you can imagine, they hire psychologists to help them decide where the buttons should go, what direction they should turn to make it easier for the consumer. So etiquette is simply that. It's all about being thoughtful. For example, when I'm traveling, I might be in Korea, I might be in Taiwan, I might be in Europe, I might be in South America. I am traveling all over the place. And did you know that in some places, the etiquette is that when you're done with your food at the dinner table, you turn your fork upside down on the plate. Well, why is that? Some people might think, oh brother, that's so silly. No, it's because when the waiter comes or the person who's coming to serve you and clear your plate, they will know that you're finished. They don't have to interrupt your conversation. They don't have to distract everyone. They know that it's time to take your plate. But if you don't follow that etiquette or you don't know, then they can interrupt and ask. But they're just trying to be thoughtful. So when you are on a Zoom meeting, it is time to be more thoughtful of the people around you. Furthermore, displaying good etiquette signifies personal dignity and integrity and traits that are admired and appreciated universally. And basically, etiquette serves as a universal language of consideration and respect. It's a tool that basically helps us navigate the complexities of social and professional interactions. And it helps us do it gracefully and with tact. Have you ever had someone ask you out or have you, had, have you asked someone out on a date You've asked them or they've asked you. And because of the way they do it, it's, it's thoughtless, it's awkward, it's weird. It puts people in an uncomfortable situation. And it might be because they're not very good at it. They don't know how to do it differently. They don't have the tools. But when you have the tools, you can gracefully decline an offer to go on a date. Or you can gracefully leave a job. There are ways you can do it that are thoughtful and considerate of all the people involved. So I'm going to give you 10 different items of etiquette to think about when you're on a Zoom meeting. I want you to start thinking about these, to start caring about these, and to start to realize there's a reason they're on the list. It's because when you do these things on a Zoom meeting, it's disrespectful, it can be rude, it can be distracting. So number one, be on time. Ah, this is the one I'm the worst at. I am working so hard at doing this. And if you're late, don't run in and everybody sees because your video is on that you're running in late and you're sitting down, you're getting set up, you're getting your pencil, you're getting your paper, whatever. Don't do that. Turn off your camera, come in, get all situated, and then discreetly turn it back on. So be on time. It's just like a physical meeting. Punctuality is important. And again, this is, I struggle with this. I used, to, I used to always be late, and I don't use that word lightly. Now, I've gotten to the point where I'm usually a little bit, a few minutes early, which most people would say is not, that's not even really on time. Like, you should be 10 minutes early, for example. So, 
just just know that we're not perfect at this. This is not to beat anybody up. It's just an opportunity to pick some things, to make some changes. It's time to grow, time to be better, time to step up, okay? Um, make sure that you're, you're getting on the connection a few minutes before it starts because I would say that 80% of the time, maybe 70% of the time, there are glitches. Whether I'm hosting the meeting or I'm getting on, you can get on a whole, a whole bunch of times, a hundred times, and all of a sudden it wants you to log in. You think you can get in at the last 30 seconds and just be right on time, and then it wants you to do the double login where you then have to get it from get the code from your phone and do the whole, and you're thinking, ah, I don't have time for this. So just be a little bit early. Number two, mute yourself when you're not speaking. I don't care how bad you are with technology. Get on early enough that you can find the microphone button, know where it is, or have somebody show you, and then turn it off so that you're not making all these noises and everybody knows, oh, that person doesn't know where the mute button is or they don't realize. Obviously, you might make a mistake. That's okay. Just you know, take care of it as quickly as you can when you notice. But minimize background noise if you're going to be speaking. Always mute. And this is especially important in really big meetings because if you have one or two, five people out of, out of a thousand who are unmuted, then the hostess doesn't know who it is. So it's hard to figure out where to stop the noise from because I've been presenting meetings where I have a thousand people on and there's all this background noise. So, but, I, but I've invited someone in the audience to speak and we're talking or they're asking a question. So I can't mute everyone because if I do, we won't be able to hear the person who I'm talking with. So it's a really big deal. Number three, keep your video on unless it would be inappropriate. And don't be doing inappropriate things on purpose so that you can turn off your, your, um, your video. Keep your video on. If you're dealing with bandwidth issues, then you might need to turn it off. Or if it's an inappropriate environment, let's say that it's an event that I really want to attend, but I am coming back from a flight and there's no way I can get back in time. I'm going to be on the call, but I'm going to turn off my video. But it is actually really respectful to put in the chat. You don't have to tell the whole story. You don't have to say, well, my plane just landed and this is my whole life story. And so now this is what's going on. You don't need to do that. I, my plane just landed and I'm in a distracting situation. So I'm, I'll have my video off until I am in a situation where I can turn it on. So what you're doing is, you're, now realize, you might think, well, they don't, it's none of their business. They don't have to know. No, but imagine this. I want you to think if everybody did what you are doing, if you have your video off, and you're on a thousand person call and everybody else has their video off, how do you think that feels for the host or the hostess? It feels bad. And so, and you are important. Just because there are a thousand people on and only 10 people have their videos off or a hundred people have their videos off, don't do it. You, are you there to be engaged or not? Obviously there are situations where there's, it's an irregular situation and for you to even be able to be on and be participant, then you have to have your video off. Obviously that's okay. But as a general rule, try to have your video on and realize that when it's off, it makes it less, um, it makes it less engaging for the host or the hostess. It's, it's a lot harder. As a presenter, it's way easier when you can see people's faces and they are, they're going to a lot of effort to share with you whatever information they're giving. Make the effort to have your video on. Number four, limit distractions. Make sure your background is not distracting. I don't care how cool you think that, um, that rotating light is in the background, turn it off. Let other people be able to focus on the speaker because everything you do that's distracting, it draws attention to you. So not only is it thoughtless of the host or hostess who's giving presentation, it's also not very thoughtful of all those people who took the time, made the effort to be at this event, schedule their time, which is very precious, let them be focused. If you were presenting in a live event, imagine how you would like it if somebody who was sitting behind you on the stand started making, making movements and doing all these actions that drew attention to them instead of to you. It's not because you're selfish and you want the attention. People came to hear from you. And it's also distracting for the presenter. Sometimes it's really hard to not get off topic because something is being super distracting. So realize that when you're in a Zoom meeting, people can see on the screen, you don't know if they're zoomed into the speaker. You don't know if they have all the little squares. And I don't care if it's a thousand person meeting. You don't know what page they're on. 
They might be on page 20 and you're on page 20. So make sure that you're aware of those. Let me list some of the distractions. You want to make sure that your pets, children are not running back and forth and that they're quiet. Other potential disturbances are multitasking. Don't be doing other things while you're in the event unless if you if you want to be writing or typing, make sure that it doesn't look like you're writing or typing. If you're there for the event, sometimes I might be on next and something they say makes gives me an idea and I'm going to write it down. But I'm not going to grab my notebook and get my pencil and make it look like I'm doing this whole big thing. I'm going to be very discreet about it and so that it's not distracting. Honestly, it's I'm not embarrassed. I'm not worried about it. What I'm doing is I'm being thoughtful of the speaker. I'm trying to let people pay attention and focus on what they came for. Another thing is a lot of moving around. Something that I see a lot is people who are on a Zoom, who are friends with someone else on the Zoom, they'll zoom, they'll put their head in like this because they want to draw attention. They're trying to get the person's attention. They'll have something that they think is funny and they'll hold it up and they'll go like this while the person is talking. Do those things before the meeting starts and after the meeting is over. It's okay to have fun and enjoy each other and kind of mess around with each other, but don't do it during the middle of the meeting. It's not appropriate and it's not thoughtful. Eating during the meeting is very distracting. It's a, it's a little less distracting if it's a drink and you're taking drinks during the meeting, but eating a whole bowl of soup or eating a whole plate of food, and I'll tell you, I've been guilty of some of these things. And I recently was on a Zoom, I was on a Zoom meeting and I saw some people eating and it wasn't that I was worried about the fact that they were eating. I was trying to focus and it was actually a spiritual event. So I'm trying to focus and because they were eating and it was so obvious, it was extremely distracting. And the feeling that I was having that was spiritual and, and beautiful and kind of more reverent would dissipate because of that distraction. And no matter, and I, I'm pretty good at focusing. So of course, it's my job to focus my mind. Number five is use a professional or a neutral background or have a background that's stationary. If you can't find a neutral setting for your video, use a, you can use a virtual background. Be mindful of your body language. I talked a little bit about going in like this, but the truth is if you, like I've, I've seen where people are, they start laughing so hard, not because of what the speaker says, it's not something funny, but they're laughing really hard because of something someone else in another picture is doing. Or there'll be two people sitting beside each other in the, screen, in the frame and they talk and they start laughing and they're making a big drama about what they're doing. Of course, sometimes you might whisper something to somebody beside you, but be very discreet and don't start laughing big. Do things that keep it very graceful and very tactful. Use body language that shows that you are engaged, that you're interested. If you're not interested in being in this call, why are you there? If somebody made you be there and so you're thinking, well, I have an excuse because I didn't really want to be here anyway. Well, guess what? Step and start caring about some of this etiquette. Number seven, use the raise your hand feature. That way you avoid interrupting other people and so, sometimes it's not available and sometimes the host will invite you to do otherwise. Sometimes maybe it's a brainstorming session, maybe it's a discussion. They say, turn your microphones on and I want people to share. And then of course, sometimes when that happens, you'll talk over each other a little bit, but then you'll say, oh, go ahead and go first. Or you, know, you kind of are just kind and thoughtful of each other and it works out just fine but use the raise your hand feature when you can. And if you are the host or the hostess, make sure you're watching for that. Sometimes I get so distracted because I'm focused on what I'm presenting and what I need to teach that I'm not paying as close attention to the raised hands. Sometimes I've learned that sometimes it works better for me when I have one of my employees sit and monitor. And so they're watching the raised hands and letting me know so that number one, I know the order and number two, I can make sure that I'm not neglecting anyone. Number eight, Dress appropriately. Dress for the call as if you were going in an in-person meeting. Now you've heard people say business on the top, party on the bottom, or business on the top, pajamas on the bottom. That's fine if they can't see that. But what they do see should present who you are representing. Are you representing your company? Are you representing your church? Are you representing, are you representing a humanitarian organization? Make sure you dress appropriately. Have some class, have some dignity for what it is that you are trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do because you are representing something important.
Sometimes I'm on calls because I hire coaches for my entrepreneur enterprises. And so I'm on just as a representative of my business. Doesn't mean I have to be in a suit. Doesn't mean I have to be in a dress. But it does mean I want to represent myself well. The dignity you show for yourself passes over into your business or into whatever organization you're working with. Number nine, stay engaged. It's a lot more fun being on a, in a Zoom call when people are responding in the chat. React appropriately to other people and their points during their presentation. Put information in the chat or simply nod or show that you're listening. Think about when you are speaking. If everyone's looking away or slouched in their chair, they look like they're not interested, it feels bad as a presenter. So if you're wanting to be there, you're making the effort. Number 10, it's a good idea to check in and check out at the beginning and the end of the meeting. Acknowledge others as they join, if you're the one who's presenting. As people jump on, if I'm the presenter, I need to be saying, oh, welcome, Wendy's here. Um, I'm excited to see Joe from Indiana, or I'm excited, we've got um, Susie from Taiwan. It's, it makes people feel so welcome. And again, the etiquette thing is thoughtful. It helps them feel cared about. So if you're not the person presenting, you can just hop on and say, hey, Teresa Harding here, and then mute your mic. If you're not the person who's presenting, just hop on, say, hey, I'm Ter Teresa Harding's here, and then turn your mic off. It helps engage everybody right at the beginning. Think of meetings you've been in where everybody gets on and there's just silence. It's fine. It's okay. But imagine if everybody got, I've been on meetings where people, anyone who gets in, they're, they're excited to be there. And they say their name, hey, so-and-so from this location is here. Everybody gets on. And already at the beginning, people feel like they have a unity. Like they are, they, like they have a little bit of a bond instead of feeling awkward and silent. And it takes half of the presentation before you're really engaged. Now, when you leave at the end, Say goodbye to people unless you have to leave early or unless it will be distracting. And the same thing when you enter. If you're late, don't acknowledge yourself. Just come in, be discreet, and, and the host or hostess can decide if they want to say, hey, Teresa, glad you could make it, or whatever. Sometimes, if I'm presenting, if somebody's late, I won't point them out. Because number one, I don't want them to feel bad that they're late and point it out to everyone so everybody notices. Number two, I don't want to pe distract people from the message that they're getting. And... Number three, what will happen is if, they're, if, if I've let them know at the beginning, let's say I have a guest speaker. If I let them know at the beginning, um, I'm so excited we have these people coming. Um, Suzanne won't be able to be here until partway through, so we'll be excited when she arrives, whatever. If I say that, then when she comes on in the middle of late, then I will acknowledge her. But I won't do that if it's during someone else speaking. If I'm the one who's speaking, I'll interrupt myself at the end of a sentence or wherever it would feel appropriate. If it would, if it would distract too much or change the feel of what's happening at the moment, then I won't. I'll do it when it's an appropriate time, maybe when there were a break between speakers or something like that. So these guidelines provide a really solid foundation for respectful, for productive Zoom meetings and for efficient Zoom meetings, honestly. So remember, being thoughtful in a virtual meeting means considering both what other people are seeing and hearing from you and what you can do to make the experience more pleasant and positive for everyone, including the person who's presenting. I would love to see that there is more etiquette happening on Zoom calls because I've seen a decline in the meetings. And maybe it's because during COVID, everybody was doing meetings and people had to live their lives using Zoom and it just became natural and normal to not worry about those things. Or if that's the way you did your, your business, then maybe you would have a meeting while you ate together on Zoom or something like that. But So obviously, there are situations where you would go outside of the norm. But just be thoughtful. The, real, the reality is, think about these things, be thoughtful of them, and be aware when you choose to do one of these things in a Zoom meeting, what it feels like for the other people around you, for the presenter. Because on this channel, I don't want you to just think different. I want you to be different.